Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us. This is the first time we've done this, so we're we're pretty excited about it. Um, you know, Jordan's been here for almost two years, and and year one was uh, almost a clinic. I mean, what what a ton of success he had. But uh, he all conference player from St. Norbert in Wisconsin. He's uh, this is his third head coaching job, 269 wins overall in a career. It's also his birthday today. Coach, coach happy birthday. Uh, welcome in, and why don't you just kind of start off with kind of share more about your background and, and how you how you ultimately ended up at Central. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate everybody uh, coming on here. I, I apologize, I haven't been great at connecting over the last couple of years. I know I've talked to a lot of you guys, but I haven't been in other areas. And but you know, my background is I'm an accountant of all things. So uh, went to St. Norbert, got an accounting degree. Uh, Decided I would jump into that field. A year later, I decided that that was not a whole lot of fun. Um, so I took this resume of Division Three baseball and auditing work and tried to get a coaching job. Uh, that didn't go real well out of the shoot, but uh, worked a few assistant coaching jobs. Actually, I spent three years at St. Norbert. Uh, one of the cool things about it was the coach I played for, Tom Winston, is now one of our assistant coaches. So. Uh, pretty neat to have the coach that, that you played for on staff, and uh, actually one of our other assistants, Tony Jandron, played at St. Norbert as well when I was an assistant there, so uh, some pretty cool connections there, but uh, from there I went to Northwest Missouri State Division II school for three years as an assistant, and then I got my first head coaching job two years at, a, at an NAIA school in Nebraska before I bounced over to, to Northwood 30 miles down the road and spent four years at Northwood, and uh, thankfully, when the CMU job came open, I was able to... Jordan, let me unmute you real quick. Okay, there we go. I'm good. Um, so, yeah, I was able to, to fool Michael Alford into thinking I could do a decent job here and uh, get the job and take good players and get out of their way and, and win some games. So, uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind handful of years, and it's nice to be settled in. And, and if there's any benefit to this, this last couple of months, it's it's maybe getting my arms around things for the first time in a while. So, uh, been a pretty cool two years, um, just getting to work with our guys and and get to know the history of the program a little bit more. Obviously, Coach Kyle, it's a huge influence on so many people on this call, and and still is on our program and been a really big guiding factor. But uh, that's that's kind of the ten cent tour of how you go from auditor to baseball coach, I guess. So from a personal standpoint, I mean, again, you've been here for two years now. Tell us a little bit about, you know, transition over to Mount Pleasant and a little bit about your family. Yeah, Katie and I, um, my wife, Katie, we've been married uh, almost seven years now, six and a half years. Um, we lived in Midland, so the move part was pretty easy, but we moved over in August of 18, about a month and a half after I got the job. And obviously, it's been really nice to settle into, into Mount Pleasant. We live just about a mile from campus. Katie, my wife, actually works for the school as well. She works in the College of Education. So um, that part's been great. We've got three little ones. Luke and Parker just had their third birthday, uh, May 16th. And so they're kind of tearing the house apart. They're in the neighbor's swimming pool right now. Um, and then Chase, our little guy, he'll be one in July here. So I uh, just had his first teeth pop in the other day, and uh, he's he's getting tough in a hurry because his brothers beat him up. So, just been a great place to call home with with young family, and uh, that part's been been pretty fun for us. I went back and watched your uh, your press conference. So it's been almost two years to the day uh, that you got hired. So, what what's happened really in the last two years since you've been hired? Tell us about your staff. Highlight the 2019 season and then talk about, you know, everything going on. Yeah, you know, the, the first big thing for us was getting staff in place. And and I think what's special about our coaching staff is the relationships we had. I, I kind of had a plan for how I wanted it to look when I got the job. And, and thankfully that all panned out. Like I said, Tom Winsky is one of our assistants. He was my college coach, uh, was the winningest coach in the history of his conference at St. Norbert. So, I mean, pretty incredible to get 20 years of head coaching experience on your staff. And Tony Jandron, who again played at St. Norbert when I was an assistant coach there and, and was an assistant of, of ours for three years when I was at Northwood, I got on staff. And then Kyle Schrader, 
who's been an assistant of mine uh, at all kinds of places all the way back to 2009, so 12, 11, 12 years now. Um, so a lot of chemistry on that staff. And if, if you look at how we teach and how we go about things, we talk a lot with our team about caring about each other and being on the same page and pulling on the same rope. And I think what they see is a coaching staff that really feels the same way about each other. And that's been, I mean, that's been incredibly valuable. I mean, for you guys, I'm sure you had some of the same experience where you spent more time with an assistant coach at times than you do the head coach. So those guys are, I mean, they're, they're not real on the radar, probably on the division one landscape, but, but they're incredibly, incredibly helpful for our guys. And, and I'm sure much more well liked than, than I am with our guys. So um, that part of it's been great. First season obviously was, was kind of a dream come true. Um, I, if you get to know me a little better, I pretty much can see the glass half empty with any team and assume we'll lose every game until we actually win it. Um, so I knew we had some players. I mean, we were coming off a decent season the year before. I had a lot of injuries and we're starting to get healthy. And so I knew we had potential, but I don't think I ever could have dreamt up, you know, winning 19 in a row the second half of the season. And, and what our guys did in terms of just bonding together and, and caring about each other and those things. I actually, it was pretty cool the other day. Uh, I think it was two, two days ago uh, was the one year anniversary of our win over Miami in the regional. And I'm completely inept techn technologically, but my wife found a 20 minute highlight thing on YouTube of that game. And just watching guys who were seniors who were part-time players in the bottom of our order being the guys who came up with the key hits, guys that in some programs probably would have cashed it in or pouted about their role, all of a sudden picking up hits against first round draft picks to win games in region. I mean, that was, that was, it was pretty surreal. Even watching it again the other day, it, it really gave me goosebumps. And, and what was so cool is it wasn't the guys that were getting the individual accolades that that stepped up and, and helped us win that game. The, the relief pitchers that day, one was a freshman walk on and then Zach Cohn was a guy who the first half of the year had, had kind of pitched his way out of the rotation. And, and then all of a sudden he's closing out a game against Miami and just the, the chemistry side of things and seeing how that paid off late in the season was, I mean, it's one of those things you're not going to forget. I'm sure a lot of you guys had the same things on, on so many of your championship teams and, and it, pretty special to be a part of. So tell us about, I mean, you, you were at Northwood Division II school right down the street. I mean, how has, um, talk about Michigan, recruiting Michigan, uh, your philosophy on recruiting, and then kind of dive into scheduling too. I think that's always a, a good topic. Yeah, recruiting wise, you know, our goal with our first class, which was, you know, the freshman we had on the field this year, uh, we felt like we needed to get a little better defensively. We needed to get a little bit more athletic. We may, maybe needed to pitch in the strike zone a little bit more. So um, kind of some under the radar guys in that group. We typically are recruiting Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin, kind of that five state radius. Not that we're not willing to look outside of that. We've got a, a transfer coming in from, from California this fall uh, who's really going to help us. But generally speaking, we've stayed in that five state radius and our, our first recruiting class we wanted to get stronger up the middle we wanted to get deeper up the middle get more athletic uh, and we thought we did that we we had a couple of freshmen starting this year before the year ended one of them Zach Legner was starting every day at second base and um, a couple of publications have have named him the freshman of the year in our league for the shortened season and so we did well there and now this next recruiting class, what we feel like we wanted to focus in on is, is a little bit more size, a little bit more strength on the corners, a um, little bit more drive the ball in the gap type of guy. And, and we feel like we've got that group coming in and we think it'll create a nice balance. Now, some of those guys are gonna have to wait a little bit to get on the field because our seniors are gonna be coming back next year. But um, we don't really recruit as much based on position as we do find guys that are good athletes and can help us. And, and we feel like we can move guys around and coach them up if we need to. And that, that's been pretty effective for us. Uh, we like to recruit depth. We don't put a ton of scholarship money into one or two guys and rely on those guys. We, we spread out the money we have. And I, I think that's valuable on the chemistry in our roster. We've got a lot of guys in similar boats and that's been good. Um, scheduling wise, uh, next year I think is pretty exciting. We're we're going to take a trip down to South Florida to play in Tampa in late March. 
Uh, we've got we've got trips to Stephen F. Austin to start the season. We've got a trip to UAB in there. Um, moving around a little bit, we'll play Auburn in a midweek game, so our guys will get kind of that SEC big big atmosphere, which will be cool. Uh, and then our conference just switched up, where we're going to play all nine of the other teams three games apiece, and the winner of the regular season is going to get the automatic bid uh, to the postseason. And uh, I guess it's a little bit of a disappointment to our guys that there's not a conference tournament, but on the flip side, I think we like the idea that we're going to send the best team in our league to the NCAA tournament. And, and we feel like if we do things right, we should have a really good chance to be that team. Yeah. So I think I'm going to hand it over. Bill Morway has a question. Bill, do you want to, you want to chime in with a question? Uh, that was an accident. I just pressed the wrong button. I'm good. Awesome. All right. We'll get back to it then. I was getting um, nervous. I was going to fail on the first quiz here. Uh, so it's been, you know, we got off to a good start. We were 11 and six this spring. You know, take us through that that March 12th time frame. You know, what was the conversation like? You know, from the administration and, and practice, and tell us where you were, how everything went down with uh, the impact of COVID. Yeah, that was a. That was a really surreal deal. We were down in Florida. It was our spring break. Uh, the previous weekend, we had been in Jacksonville. We had played North Florida. And then we were in the middle of two midweek games in Kissimmee. Um, we had played on a, on a Wednesday. And when the game got done that day, we had lost to Bucknell, who we had beaten 22 to two, two days before. So I'm already in, a, in just a wonderful mood. And my wife kind of calls me over. So what, what is she doing here? And she said, well, just so you know, they put classes online the rest of the semester. So I'm going to talk to the team after the game. And, and at that point, obviously, the wheels are turning. By that night is when the Jazz had, had canceled their NBA game. And at that point, you knew that there could be a lot of change coming soon. So the next day, we're practicing in the middle of Florida. And I'm seeing on my phone that you know, this tournament's canceled and the Ivy League had canceled spring sports and you saw the dominoes falling and it was it was really a surreal deal where you're practicing and at the same time kind of assuming the season's probably over. A really weird, weird deal. Uh, the hardest part was a couple hours later, we were back at our condos when the NCAA did a press release that they were canceling all, all championships for the year, including the spring championships, which fact ended our season and uh, our seniors went through that moment of is my career over is that it what what happens now and obviously none of us had answers uh, 36 hours before we were um, so thankfully the NCAA did did end up allowing those seniors to come back it's going to create some challenges with the roster but I think end of the day it was the right thing to do uh, and all five of those seniors will be back, which which is exciting. It's nice to have those guys back. It wasn't a huge group, um, but I'm glad they get to go out on their terms rather than, you know, just having something, having the plug pulled mid-season like it was. So it, it hits. You guys come back to Michigan. So what's the team doing now? How have you got, how have you guys been communicating with them? How did they end up the semester, academics, workouts, and, and what are they doing this summer? Yeah, we we really only kept them on campus a couple of days. We met with them and we really got them home because obviously this thing was blowing up pretty quickly and we wanted to get guys home safely. You know, some guys have weight rooms in their basement. Um, we've got a couple of guys that have a batting cage in their basement. And so they're able to get a lot done. We've got other guys that are sending me pictures of of building their own squat racks with a pile of wood. Uh, so it's it's really a varied deal. And what we've really tried to do is be a little bit more hands off. We've had some Zoom calls, we figured out how to do that, but we've really just kind of given them some freedom to stay safe, spend time with family, encourage them to stay in shape. Uh, and now we're starting to push a little bit more to, to figure out is there a way we can play some summer baseball? Uh, is there is there more these guys can do to work out? But I just figured it was a good time to to let baseball be a little bit secondary to an odd time in the world. And I'm hopeful that'll lead to a lot more excitement when we do get them back. Uh, pretty proud of them in the classroom this last semester. Uh, they had a 3.53 GPA, which uh, was pretty flooring. I, 
I wonder how easily these teachers are grading because you guys know baseball players well enough to know some of them shouldn't be three, five students. Um, but no, they did a great job. We had about a three, two or a three, two, five in the fall, which was a huge step forward for us. And then we really jumped through uh, with, with a major spring. Um, I think 24 of our guys were over a three, five. Um, so a pretty remarkable spring by those guys. And in a time they could have been sitting around and moping and feeling bad for themselves. So talk about the fall. What, what do you expect? I mean, incoming freshmen, how you're going to balance those five seniors coming back and then how many kids are actually coming in. I mean, that's, that's going to be really interesting. Talk about that. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a little bit over 40 guys to start the fall, which for me is not really unusual at the division two and NAIA levels. I was always pushed to, to have teams with a bigger roster. And so that doesn't bother me, but it's a different atmosphere when, when at the Division I level, we're used to working with a 35-man roster limit. Obviously, those seniors that are coming back are good players, and we've got a lot of pieces back. And so the freshmen are, they're going to be in a little different spot, and I've talked to them about they're going to have to be a little more open to the idea that a red shirt's maybe more of a possibility. Some of them will still earn time and earn roles. We're open to that. Uh, but it'll be a different dynamic. I'm hopeful that the chemistry side that we push so hard will help us at a time that every program's dealing with some of the same challenges. We've got some, you know, a couple of sixth year guys next year. They're they're grown men and we've got 18 year olds moving on. They're kind of in different worlds. And I think our guys will do a really nice job of just adapting and becoming a family just like they have been. But what we don't know is, you know, school yesterday, uh, CMU announced we're going to start school two weeks early, August 17th, try to get done by Thanksgiving uh, so that we can avoid maybe that, that group of students going home over the holidays, then coming back and risking some of the spread of the virus and things like that. But we haven't planned a thing with the fall yet because I'm kind of just waiting to see what does it look like, what's safe, what's not, what are the protocols, and as a coach, I'm sure Coach Kylitz knows this, trying to trying to go in blind right now. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, but uh, we'll do the best we can with it, and, and we'll adapt, and we'll figure out a plan once we have a little bit of better idea on what the details are. So what's really cool about this call, this is the first time we've actually uh, organized and, and got a letter winner's uh, group back together across the entire athletic department. So it's pretty exciting. I mean, you 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 helped champion this. I mean, what was what was your idea about trying to put this together? Yeah, you know, I I think in a perfect world, when you get a new job and in, in a program like like ours, I mean, you see all the championship banners on the wall. You see all the all conference selections, all the future pro players. You talk to Coach Pallets about the history and the teams and the success. And I mean, it's all pretty overwhelming to be really honest and you, if you just had a bunch of time on your hands the first thing I would probably do is try to connect with that group of people and and get to know them better and spend time with them now number one we're all over the country that's a challenge but number two you know the world just doesn't stop for you we had a bunch of unfilled recruiting spots we you know you just it felt like we just had to hit the ground running because we wanted we had 10 seniors last year and it's like we want to give these guys every chance we can to not have a transitional challenge and, and hit the ground running but in that you lose taking the time that i probably should have taken to connect a little bit and and as we've gotten through this pandemic this really weird period I mean, for me, spending time with my family this spring that I wouldn't have spent has been obviously a huge blessing in disguise. And I got to thinking about, all right, how else can we take advantage of this kind of unfortunate deal? And I thought, well, you've put off for two years what you should have been spending time on the last couple of years. Let's see if we can start to, to really connect with you guys. Um, and I think we're recording this right now. I think we'll pass it along, uh, hopefully get some guys that couldn't call in on checking it out and hopefully over the next eight weeks six weeks kind of build this thing and and really more or less ask you guys what i can do to help represent what you guys built so well and and make sure we're putting a good foot forward and and tell you guys how how flattering it is to have an opportunity to to kind of help lead the thing that you guys built that's awesome so I think at this point, those those are all my questions. If um if anybody else, I'm gonna unmute Coach Kylitz, and then if anybody else has a question, Coach, do you you want to ask a question right now? 
No, I think this is a great start. Um, we've, you've got four of these lined up with Coach Bischel. Um, uh, I know that our alumni is interested. We have our, uh, in September, provided we're able to, depending on uh, what the CMU protocol might be at this time and what the situation is with the virus, we're going to have a, a reunion of our 80 and 81 championship teams. I combine those two. Uh, because so many of the same guys played on those two teams. We'll have that in September, uh, connected along with uh, Jordan's golf outing that he'll have. Uh, we'll have a dinner Friday night, um, I believe the 18th, brunch at my place, uh, our home on uh, Saturday morning, and then the golf outing in the afternoon. And um, so it, it's hard to believe that's 40-year reunion of those uh, those teams. But um this, uh, I, I will say to the group that's on, uh, we could not be more pleased than, uh, than uh, the job that Coach Bischel and his staff and our players have done has been absolutely remarkable. I think one of the greatest thrills I've had in my 60 years at CMU is that team two years ago when we won the championship and then went on to the regional down at Mississippi State, beat Miami in the first game. Um, I knew our program was well on the way and in great hands. So we're excited. Uh, the program will be back on top uh, and doing great things. Uh, the only downside, um, Jordan, is that we expect this out of you every year now. So uh, just keep uh, just keep it going. You know, it was funny. I, I sarcastically at the end of the year we finished 11 and six. Obviously, we only played 17 games. And so I called Coach Kyle and I said, Coach, we only lost six games the entire year. I said, I bet you've never done that. And right away he shoots back. I don't know which year was it, but Coach had a year where they lost five games. 71. <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't even beat that in a third of a season. So um, <laughs> still plenty plenty areas where we we, we got big shoes to fill here. But, uh, yeah, piggybacking off what Coach said, September 19th we'll do a golf outing. Uh, tried to combine it here where uh, it's both alumni and family and friends of our current team. Uh, what we'll do on the 18th on Friday is we'll have some sort of an inner squad set up that runs into the early evening um, so that if people can get there on Friday, they can check out the current team, get to know those guys a little bit. We'll have subs set out. Uh, families bring kind of a potluck deal. We would love to have people there. Uh, the 18th and or the 19th, um, I would like to try to work towards seeing if maybe we could get a bunch of guys from the 2010 team back as well, because we'll be at, we're at 10 years right now since their championship, but would love to see that kind of mushroom into a, a full-fledged reunion for our program and, and really a chance to put names with faces of our current guys. It's a really good group of guys. They they really buy into what we're doing and it's a fun group and, and I, I would love to have guys there. But in the meantime, we've got a lot of chances to connect this summer. So if there are questions right now, I'm happy to ask them. And if there's things you'd like us to talk about on these future calls, it's really an open forum where what I want to do is get you guys involved and, and ask how I can help keep a better, better connection going than maybe I've done the last two years. So if any of you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself uh, on the right side of the screen, or if you want to throw out a chat, uh, let 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 me know. So we'll uh, we'll give it give it a few minutes. And kind of look looking ahead, the next call will be on on June 16th, and we'll have some current current players on that call as well. So looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, Garrett, I'll go if no one else is going to. Um, Dan Griesbaum, Jr., uh, 2004 grad. Um, thanks for uh, getting us together, Coach. Appreciate it. Um, I uh, do a little coaching on the side when I'm able to and, uh, you know, talk to a lot of the young players. Um, can you kind of give a sense for uh, what you're looking for, you know, in a recruit right now? And, you know, in terms of, you know, skills, are you looking for uh, – you know, faster guy that plays great defense, or are you, you know, a guy who looks for the three-run homer a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. And then also as a, maybe a follow-up, um, how the, the five seniors coming back, how has that affected your scholarship limit? Does that not count toward the limit or how, how does that work out? 
Yeah, I'll answer that one first, just so it doesn't slip for me. What the NCAA did is they uh, they said that those seniors could come back on the same amount of aid they had or less, and it wouldn't count towards the NCAA limits. Now, different schools have approached that differently. Uh, some have supported it, some have not. Um, our school did it the right way. They've supported um, the vast majority of the of the financial uh, commitment we had to those guys. So those guys will come back here on on virtually the same financial aid they had, and it won't count towards our limit. I was I was really impressed. It's obviously a, not an easy time to be in higher education right now, and and President Davies and and Michael Alford really stepped up and went to bat and just said we got to do the right thing here, even if it's not perfect on the bottom line and. Uh, pretty cool to see that happen. Um, so it doesn't impact that. Uh, we get an exemption on the roster so they can we can carry those five guys plus 35. Um, so the biggest challenge is just how does it impact chemistry? There's there's more guys, but the same amount of playing time. But I, I trust our guys will figure that out. Um, in terms of the recruiting side, Dan, I, I'm wondering how you ever got into coaching. Are there, are there any bloodlines there? <laughs> Anybody in your family that's coached a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, Obviously, great, great, history, great, uh, great question. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to get my dad on a call too. I'll let him know, Coach Kyle. I'll let him know, Coach Kyle was here. That'll, that'll get him motivated. That was our test to know if everybody could figure out WebEx. Is if Coach Kyle, it's, you know, if a 94 year old can figure this thing out, <laughs> anybody can. We know that. So, uh, but the recruiting side of things, um, what we really look for um, is probably defenders before offensive players. I. We teach a hitting philosophy that's been really, really effective and talks a ton about plate approach more than it does swing mechanics. And and through it, we've really been able to find a way to have good athletes be productive, whether it's through being able to take their walks, whether it's using the bunt as a weapon, whether it's used, you know, we, we just feel like if they're a good enough athlete to really defend for us, they're probably a good enough athlete to learn how to swing the bat. And Zach Legner, our freshman this last year from Kimberly, Wisconsin, uh, actually there's twins, Zach and Drew, but Zach had a little bigger impact this year. Um, he's a great example. He's an undersized kid, probably 160 pounds, five foot nine, uh, but just really a tremendous middle infielder that in the fall really didn't drive the ball, not a lot of extra base hits, got a lot of hits, but wasn't an impact player offensively, but but he was a he was a football starter at Kimberly High School in Wisconsin, which was just an absolute powerhouse. Hey, is an absolute powerhouse in Wisconsin. At some one point, they won 76 straight games and at the highest level in Wisconsin. And you know, we said this kid's a great defender. He's a great athlete. He's a football guy. He's a good hitter that that's not explosive enough yet. But we thought we could develop that. And by the end of the year, I think he was hitting fifth in our lineup and had five doubles and two home runs. And He's kind of an example of, of that's the way we draw it up. Now, we don't mind if they weigh more than 160 pounds. It's not the worst thing to get a couple of big thump, thumpers in there, but we really are careful in our recruiting to look for guys that can defend first. Um, and it's funny because last year we set a lot of offensive records, but we really base our lineup off the defensive side first. And, and obviously that makes a huge impact on the pitching staff. On the pitching side, we're really careful to put guys that throw strikes on the mound. And I know every coach says it, but if you look at probably what changed the most with us last year, it was our, our ability to decrease the number of free passes we were allowing. And, and if, you, if you recruit a good defender and then have a pitching staff that puts the ball in play, I mean, we're going to make you earn it if we're going to get beat. And that's been overall a pretty good formula for us. Um, obviously, the Every guy's a little bit different. If a guy can't play a position, but he can hit 15 home runs for us, we're not going to turn him down. But, you know, Coach Kylitz had the foresight to help design a field that's about 440 feet in the gaps here. So <laughs> 390 foot flyouts don't do us a lot of good at home. So we got to have guys that cover ground and, and can hit in the gaps a little bit and do those things. So I guess that's in a nutshell. But the big thing I want our coaches to look for when they go out on the road is do we find a difference making tool? You know, is there something that just stands out? This guy can change a game. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing we're looking for. Great, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Any other questions? Coach, can you uh, 
tell us a little bit about um, Xavier Warren, uh, the shortstop from last year, All-American. Xavier is a, a great story. Um, the year before I came over to CMU, Xavier was between his junior and senior year of high school. And I was actually at the, the travel ball tournament at CMU that, that went around the 4th of July. And in Division I terms, 4th of July going into your senior year is getting pretty late in the recruiting process. And I'm watching Xavier play, and I'm at Northwood. I'm watching this kid. I'm saying, this kid is is far too good to, to come play Division II ball for us, but he's unsigned, he's uncommitted. So I actually had a little bit of recruiting interaction with Xavier. The downside was, you know, that weekend when I was watching him, he hit about five balls into those 440 foot gaps and legged out some triples and did some things. So so CMU jumped on him shortly thereafter and, and got him committed. A, at the time it was disappointing and turns out it was an unbelievably unbelievable blessing for us. But Xavier's a guy who, you know, out of high school, it's not that he wasn't a prospect, but he was not a draft prospect. He's, he was not a top tools type guy, uh, but he has he has been just an unbelievable worker for us. What's what's pretty cool about Xavier is you know he played shortstop virtually every game for us the last two years, but this year he caught three or four games for us and and really has some potential as a as a pro catcher. I think wherever he goes. They're going to start him out as a as a shortstop, but his versatility. He he played third base in the Cape last summer. Uh, like I said, he caught well for us this spring. Uh, is it, pretty impressive. But you know the reason Xavier's gone from an undrafted kind of off the radar guy for scouts as a high school senior to a huge prospect as a college junior has been work ethic. He's a guy who legitimately I, I think has not missed one practice rep in the two years that I've been here which for a kid that knew he was going to be in the lineup every day it's really easy to beg out of one throwing drill or one but he just never did um, and I think our assistant coaches would tell you did I get lost here you're all right I'm good all right I think our assistant coaches would tell you that uh, there probably was not ever a two-day stretch where Xavier didn't come in and do some work on his own. Um, so Xavier, the draft is next Wednesday. I'm sure you guys have seen it shortened to five rounds. Uh, every piece of feedback we've gotten is that Xavier should still be really a no-doubt pick in those first five rounds, most likely somewhere in that third or fourth round. And just pretty cool. He's a kid with a family that doesn't have a ton of money, just you know, blue-collar group. Uh, mom's a teacher, great family. And he's going to get a really nice signing bonus and have a great chance to be a big league player and really a kid that you just you can't help but but quite frankly love the kid he just does everything right he has no ego if you were in our locker room you would have no idea that that he's a he's a top draft prospect a kid that our program is going to be really really proud of for a long time any, any other questions guys Thank you for joining yeah, us. Dan Cronkright. I got, I got one, one question, Coach. Um, you yes, Dan. About, uh, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Hey, you got five seniors or second year seniors staying on with you. Then you'll be losing two classes then? Will you lose basically the first seniors in the second year? And how do you uh, plan for that? That's a great question. The NCAA has given everybody their eligibility back. So last year's freshmen are going to be freshmen again this year, eligibility wise. Now we've got a couple of guys, you know, Grant Frazier is one of our top relief pitchers. Grant was a fourth year junior this year. Chase Rollins, a guy from Beale City who's in the lineup every day. He's a fourth year junior. These guys are really good students with with pretty good professional careers in front of them that won't be baseball. And so these guys have the option to play two more years, but they've kind of said, coach, I, you know, the six years in college thing is, is probably not going to pan out for me. And so those guys are probably going to move on anyway. So, but then we've got a couple of other guys who, you know, were true juniors this last year that are going to be fourth year juniors next year. That'll, they'll come back for a fifth year and play out that eligibility. So, what would have been next year's seniors, it's kind of half and half. And we're still kind of feeling that out on who wants to be back versus who's going to graduate and move on. So I would anticipate we'll probably
probably have the five seniors, probably about two or three other guys that'll give up that last year of eligibility because it's just time to move on. And then depending on how pro ball plays out this year, we'll probably have about two or three draft guys. So we'll have probably about 10 or 11 guys that one way or another are headed out, but we're also working with a 40 man roster this year. And so you don't necessarily look to fill all those. So even with that big group, it'll be a little bit of a smaller recruiting class in 21. It's a really interesting dynamic. Anyone else? We got three more of these calls. So. Oh, I, I got one. That's all right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's Ryan Cremins here, um, class of 04 as well, with uh, Dan Jr. Uh, full disclosure, we were roommates. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> That's, <laughs> they, they might not get your sense of humor. Right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Not everybody knows me that well. Um, <laughs> so uh, thanks, Coach, for uh, doing these calls. Um, it, it actually means a lot to uh, to many of us as we've um, talked about it. Um, you know, Dan, Dan and I probably still don't go more than uh, a week at most without talking to each other, along with a, a big group of guys from our our era. So. Um, you know, it's real important to us. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the, the golf outing. Um, I know that's something that a lot, a lot of guys from my era used to go to, but um, as we've all gotten married and had kids and so, some of those things have become less uh, of a priority, but, you know, maybe now looking to come back um, to attend those. And, you know, for, for a lot of us, it was real important in the past that it was a, a weekend of sort of just the the letter winners and the players to getting together and um, you know talking about CMU baseball. And so, um, do you expect in the future that the golf outing will get back to just letter winners? Um, like I guess that that's maybe the the main question that uh, that I've got. So thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I guess I haven't thought a ton about it. I mean, I think when when I when I got the job, that group of people attending had had kind of shrunk quite a bit to a point where it, it was it was fading a bit. And um, I also wanted to make sure I had a forum where our current team had a chance to to connect. One thing that's always a struggle is as a northern team, a lot of times if if our families of our players don't travel on the road, they may not meet each other until you know there's a month and a half left in the season. And so. I just figured that was a good way to kind of meld two things together. Uh, with that said, I definitely understand where you're coming from and what that desire may be. Um, thought being, you know, let's let's have conversations about that. You know, whether we keep it together, if we do, is then there a way to maybe separate your group and, and get you guys in a forum where you can spend some time exclusively with each other. Uh, I'm really happy to look at, it's, pretty remarkable how strong our alumni group is. Obviously, we we have very few guys that at some point didn't win a championship. We've got a pretty incredible history and, I, and I'm really willing to, I don't have any preconceived notions about how it should look or what we should do. I, I think um, obviously this year is a, a little bit gonna be pieced together with the COVID thing and trying to figure out what works. But in terms of long-term, I mean, you guys can let me know ideas you have, and and I I'm all for trying to get you guys together in a forum to to interact and relive some of those memories. And uh, if you need to get on the field and explore those 400 foot gaps that Coach Kyle put in place, <laughs> we we can do that. Bring your old bats because the new ones won't do it. <laughs> let me know how I can help with that for sure. Thanks, Coach. You'll have to sign up, sign a waiver too, there, Ryan. <laughs> you. Hey, I'm old enough. You won't catch me out on the field. Um, but I tell you what, when I was pitching there, I sure enjoyed those nice big gaps and uh, wind typically blowing straight in. Um, that was a, that was a lot of fun being on the mound for some of those days. So, well, thanks, thanks, Coach. I, I, I mean, I certainly want a big tent and want to have a big part of the family. Um, but I know a lot of us always liked, you know, sort of that that separate part where it's just just us kind of. Um, so yeah, so thanks for taking my question. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, and let's talk about what we can do to help create some of that stuff for you guys. Thank you. All right. 
Any anything else? Any other questions? We've been here for 45 minutes. Want to be aware of everybody's time, and, and we got another call. This is the first of four. We're doing them every other Tuesday. Currently at four o'clock. Um, you know, send send me send me some feedback if that time frame works. I know uh, some some folks you know are on the Central Time Zone and Pacific Time Zone, so we may we may look at adjusting that. And, and obviously, I think the, the max participants we got to 27. Uh, we need to we need to double that. So Ryan, all your group that you connect with, uh, please please make sure that uh, we get a, we get a lot of those guys uh, on on this call. If we have there's a good chance we don't have the best email address, but um, you know we got we got to try and drive some more people on this call, and, and we got two weeks to do it. So. Uh, let me move. I've, I've tried guys to send some emails and texts to guys that I've had some communication with. I know that our database is uh, pretty old and outdated, so don't don't hesitate to encourage old teammates to, I mean, just text me, email me, whatever. I, I'm happy to have an active role in keeping that thing updated and make sure I have an accurate contact. Uh, we'll get a video recording of this out if there's if there's any forum we can set up for you guys, if you guys want us to set up something where you guys just interact with each other and and I don't put you to sleep for a while, I mean, it really doesn't make a difference. My biggest goal is knowing with a coaching change, there, there's there's obviously turnover and some disconnect. I just want to bridge that gap because it, like I said, it's a pretty remarkable group. Um, God only knows what you'd say about each other off the field, but you did a lot on the field uh, together. And, and I just want to be a part of, trying to bring that back together as much as we can, especially during a time where our country is struggling, it appears. And I think there's gonna be some strength and unity of, of the group. And, and let me know what I can do to help. Email me, text me, call me, whatever it is, I'm 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 happy to do it. Awesome. Well, thanks, thanks for the time, Coach. Thanks for the time, everybody. And we'll see you, uh, see you right back here in, in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.